you wrote down gibberish, and you needed me to keep the gibberish in there. <laughs> okay. Was that Arnold Schwarzenegger? Arnold, Sw- Arnold Sw- Schwarzenegger. Get into the chopper. <laughs> One of these days we're going to start this podcast, and the first thing we do is what we're going to stick with. Welcome to Irritable Dad Syndrome, made with 100% recycled material. Now, here are your hosts, Mike and Darren. Breaking news, we're live now with Irritable Dad Syndrome, starring Mike and Darren. Yes, this is Mike. I'm Uh, on location in the basement on the west end of the... uh, And we are viewing a rundown of the episode, and Mm -hmm. it looks quite interesting. Yes, indeed. There is some missing gibberish that was written down, and it would have been helpful (laughs) for one of the hosts. However, (laughs) the other host just completely... It was just random consonants and vowels. Welcome to episode 57. What is that over there? That's a Velcro thing that, for some reason, once we went live in our high-tech studio... you're taking off the mask. Okay, great. I, you know, I just felt like, hey, let's start pulling Velcro. That's what <laughs> professional That's what uh, they podcasters do. and radio uh, announcers and do. And podcasters, Hey, yeah. we have one Hades of a show for you today. We do. We've today. A, we have a very important show. Or tonight, whenever yeah. you happen to be listening to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, can I kick it off? You sure can. Ticketmaster blows. Ticketmaster does. It absolutely sucks. They suck. And yeah. here, here's, here's what happened. Okay, go All ahead. Right? So in 2020, I had tickets to five concerts five five um some of them i really 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 wanted to go to Uh other ones i kind of wanted to go to and one of them i got was best wanted to see alanis 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 morissette alanis morissette was touring with garbage Uh uh-huh whom i like it was the jagged little pill tour and liz fair okay who i'm still not i always thought that was an event i didn't know that that was a (laughs) i swear i'm still not entirely sure (laughs) is it a is it a person liz fair is it elizabeth Fair is that? P- P- I don't know who the hell that is. I don't know. Anyway, but no, so they, there used to be a festival full the li- of the like, Liz Fair. No, like it was Lollapalooza. Uh, yeah, but it wasn't but the for Liz people named Fair. Elizabeth. No, 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 okay. no, no, no. It was, uh, and I'll remember what it is. Probably as soon as the podcast is over with. Okay, but it was all female acts, like the Indigo Girls, Jewel. Okay, um, I remember Jewel. Uh, Indigo Girls were on that one. Yeah, Jewel. I think. <laughs> Hole? Liz, Liz Fair. Liz Fair. I don't know that Hole was on it. She probably didn't fit. Yeah. <laughs> she, With that. Th- no, crowd. I don't think she she really. Uh, PJ Harvey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Inya. <laughs> PJ O'Rourke. <laughs> Dolly Parton. Um, is PJ O'Rourke a person or is that, did I make it? It's a band, but I don't okay. know who's. I can't tell you one song by PJ Harvey, PJ O'Rourke. Okay. You're asking stuff that I wasn't prepared Here's for. Here's the deal. She wanted to go see that. Right. Okay. She wanted to go see Alanis Morissette in concert. And so I got tickets. They're relatively expensive. Uh-huh. I got decent tickets. Because right. every time she's been to, this is at Riverbend, every time she's been there before, she's been out in the lawn. So yeah, you, okay. these were bought in 2020. You told me the the price that you paid for these tickets. Oh, yeah, that's right, because I tried to pawn you off. And uh, these were like Rolling Stones tickets, okay? We paid... It, yeah, we paid about this much for Rolling Stones. That's a lot for Alanis Morissette. And I like Alanis so, Morissette. So, okay. I don't know if you watch the news much. Right. But a lot of things happened in 2020, mm-hmm. which caused concerts to cease. Yes. Now, some bands, Tool, mm-hmm. decided to completely cancel. Right. Which annoys me because I had really good tickets to the Tool show and I would have liked it. That to have just been postponed. Right. Other bands like Alanis just postponed. Mm-hmm. Billy and Joel then, postponed. And, and Billy Joel. And and basically, we're going to put a date in the future. And if you can go, you can go. If you can't, you can't. Okay. Best could not go. And, and, and over the course of the year, she's like, I don't know if I really want to go. Uh, it's a lot of money. And I don't know. So Best started so sounding like Norm McDonald. She started sounding, yeah, a little bit. I don't know uh, if I want to so go to the show or not. Three weeks. Okay. Three weeks, Darren. Mm-hmm. Three weeks. Three before weeks. Before the show. Yeah. I say... Okay, she decides, look, can we sell them? Uh, can we just transfer them? Now, there is the option to transfer tickets to somebody else. And we talked about, let's just transfer it to one of your friends and take a cash payment. Right. But then I said, well, nobody's going to pay that amount for those tickets. Let me try to sell them legitimately on the Ticketmaster Marketplace. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I put them up for sale. Mm-hmm. Uh, it makes you charge a minimum amount, which is ungodly because these things were really expensive. So they weren't going to sell. So it goes for a week. They're not selling. Okay. I decide to try to change the price. 
there's an option there. I want to edit my listing. I press edit listing. A little box come up, says, oh, so, or something happened. Something went wrong. Please try again later. Mm-hmm. Okay. So a couple of days later, I try again. Oops. Uh, something happened. Please try again later. It's not you. It's us. It's not that you. type of thing. <laughs> So we're about two, I want my sweater back. Yeah, we're about, it's not you, it's me. You know, we're about two weeks out. Okay, uh-huh. then we get to about a week away, mm-hmm. and I decide to just cancel the thing. I, I told Bess, I was like, I'm going to either try to transfer them to somebody, or I'm going myself, because she was completely not going. Like, I don't want to waste all the money. I, right. You know, it's it's going to be a really expensive ticket, but I'll have some place to sit my beer. You know? <laughs> so, I try to cancel. Uh-huh. We're sorry, you can't do that at this moment. It's it's not you, it's us. Try again later. Uh, so I emailed him. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh the reason I emailed is because when you call, you get a voicemail right. that says we have ceased telephone operations. Mm-hmm. All of our uh, we're all busy and we're not taking calls. Mm-hmm. If you need help, there's a contact us button on your ticket order page. Click that, and it'll create an email for you, which basically all it does is creates an email to Ticketmaster to you that, know, customer they, service with your ticket number mm-hmm. or your the concert you're going to see in the subject lines. Okay, so I do that. You either call the number that they won't answer, mm-hmm. or you email somebody who won't respond. That's right. So... <laughs> that's the dramatic sip of the night. So I email, and I very calmly explain the situation. I'm very detailed in these type of situations. I try. Mm-hmm. I don't like to continue to, to rehab. It's annoying to me when people don't give me all the detail in the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know, so I try to pay it forward, so to speak, and give them all the detail that they need. We would like to either transfer the tickets or do something else with them. Please remove them from the marketplace. I get a uh, note back saying, you can remove the tickets from the marketplace yourself. Just press remove from list. Okay. I respond back almost immediately. Uh, okay. I, you saw in the previous email, I told you, I can't do that. That's not working on your site. And I sent them a screenshot where it says, it's not you, it's us, that type thing. Uh, they get an email back. We checked your tickets and they are not on the marketplace. You're free to transfer them at your leisure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I go back on. It won't work. Now we're about a day away from the concert. God. Okay. Uh-huh. And there's a little thing. There's like a little panic button. When you when you go to email them, you click a thing that says concert is within three days. Like, I guess those go to the top of the pile or whatever. Right. So I did that. Now my language starts to get a bit more <laughs> direct. Terse. <laughs> Terse. <laughs> I sent them... I send them screenshots. I tried it on the mobile device. Uh-huh. I tried it on the computer. Mm-hmm. I tried it under a different account on the computer. I tried different browsers. Mm-hmm. I deleted the Ticketmaster app. You brought in re-downloaded a it after clearing the cache. Performed an exorcism. I did everything I possibly could to prove that the problem is not on my end. Right. And I got the same result every time. I cataloged all these. They're on the computer up there right now. Uh-huh. I, here's oh, what I happened. believe you. So I sent them a the holy grail of emails. There's no way. I mean, the legal team is probably still reviewing that email. Mm-hmm. I get an email back. Try deleting your cookies and then go to Ticketmaster.com and it's just a porn thing. Uh-huh. So I start sending emails like crazy. I send emails like every couple of hours at this point mm-hmm. or the day of the concert. I'm Now I'm using all caps. Okay. I've gone full boomer on these guys. Uh-huh. The tick, the concert is now, you know, like T minus 12 hours and I can't do anything with these tickets. At this point, it's not even showing that I have tickets. Help. We see that you have tickets if you'd like to transfer, blah, 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 blah. The oh, same, for God's the sake. The same damn thing. So I called you while I was on the way to the concert. Now, Bess was thinking, we were thinking the mm-hmm. day of, well, I mean, it is Alanis. It's, we paid a lot of money for these. But she was concerned be- that we didn't know for sure if we had the tickets, right? And who wants to deal with babysitter and all that stuff or or anything? Because Andrew had practice. We were going to have to leave Charlie with someone. Who wants to deal with all that? So she was staying home. So I go to the concert. I'm already annoyed. This was a present for her. Mm-hmm. Okay. And now I'm like left with the option of bringing you. So I call you. <laughs> I was like. Yeah, no, I'm right. stuck with bringing Darren. So I get I get down there, and I now the tickets have completely. I've got a big red X on them, and I've taken screenshots of this too, mm-hmm. like a, an X with a folder with like a question mark, like the tickets are gone. And I thought, oh, I looked that up while I'm driving down. Hello, unsafeness. And it says they do that when they're changing the status of your tickets because I'd read online that if you go past 
the point of when the concert starts, Mm -hmm. it will revert the tickets back to you and you can use them. (sighs) But you have to wait until the concert has started. And I didn't care about the first group going on. I cared about garbage and I cared about kind of about Atlantis. Right. So anyway, I get there. I go up to the lady with the ticket thing and there's no barcode. I'm like, these tickets are jacked. I, they're mine. I don't know what to do. She said very calmly, like it's common, just go to the box office. They'll help you out. And I was simultaneously elated and pissed Mm -hmm. because all this Mm -hmm. that I went through with Ticketmaster, all they had to do, by the way, in these emails that I was sending them, I was sending them my phone number and I was saying, this could be over in a five minute phone call. You're not listening to my problem. You're not reacting to my problem. You're just sending me form emails. Talk to me on the phone for 30 seconds. I'll be nice. All you have to do is say, go to the box office. Mm -hmm. I go to the box office. The guy takes my ID Types in a few things, gives me paper tickets, and I'm good. Yeah. It was it was over in two minutes. Yeah. All that. <laughs> then, to okay. cap it off. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I see the concert. Garbage was awesome. Mm-hmm. I got it like halfway through Atlantis' set, and I'm like, uh, I really don't want to be stuck in the parking lot for three hours <laughs> after the concert. So I, I just pulled right Did out. Did you stay for ironic? No, that was okay. towards the end, and okay. that song pisses me off. <laughs> Okay. She she played the actually there were some songs that I wanted to see mm-hmm. that I'm here but I'm here I'm here but I'm here I'm here and when it all comes down to is everything gonna be quite all right because I got one hand on my, my puppy pocket. and another one on my kitty cat I was giving a peace sign yeah. that thing. So that she opened. I was close to that one. She doesn't say one hand on my puppy and the other one on my kitty cat. I got a hand in my pocket. Hand in my pocket and the other and one on my kitty. Giving, the other one's giving a peace sign. Oh. Okay. But, but I got to give it to you. That impression was dead on. <laughs> Here's the deal. I pride, I'm going to get to the end of the story in a minute. Okay. I pride myself on getting good tickets, like getting good placement. Yeah. The, when we saw you two, those were those, those are great, great seats. Okay. Yes. I, well, I, with great tickets. We stood for that show. Yeah. But I go hardcore on this stuff. I take this stuff very seriously. That's why I let you get the tickets. And I get nervous. I'm always a nervous wreck. Is on those. Those are general admission. We had to get there at the right time. We had to yes. go to the thing. I had yeah. to yeah. pass by Bono at the right time to, yep. to high five him or whatever. Yep. yep. All that stuff. It was nice to go to a concert that I really didn't care if mm. I saw the whole thing. I mean, I I was happy to say that I was there. Right. I was happy to see what I saw. But those last five songs. Eh, I'd rather get home before 11 o'clock okay. and go well, to bed. I'm gonna, one, okay. one last piece. Okay. As this is the end of it. Okay. The next day, I get an email from Ticketmaster. How was your time? We're sorry. We couldn't reach you before your event. You're <laughs> me. Hopefully, everything worked out fine. Thank you for using Ticketmaster. The day after. The day after. The day after. Un- regrettably, we could not get in contact with you. And I came very close to responding to oh, that with like the chain who of fifteen farted. emails. Who farted indeed? Yeah. I would still be sending him that and say, and you've got a lot of nerve. So as an act of um, How dare you? Good a little bit day, of a, sir. A little bit of an act of defiance. I wore my Pearl Jam shirt <laughs> to <laughs> That'll show the Atlantis. Well, because you know Pearl Jam sued <laughs> yeah, Ticketmaster. Yeah. yeah, and I was hoping there would be a Ticketmaster rep there. Because uh-huh. I was waiting for them to bar me from the show, and then I'd point where it says Pearl Jam. And I'd say, they were right. You guys are. And I'd flip them off a Gen X finger and walk away. <laughs> All right. I'm going to back up a okay. few weeks. Okay. Remember when we went to see Billy Idol? Yeah, I do. And I was complaining because we got the virtual tickets. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're like, hey, hey, Papa, why don't you get with the 2021, <laughs> yeah. Papa? Yeah. And hey, Gramps. You know, how's it yeah. feel having something on your phone? And, uh-huh. Oh, sorry, you don't have paper in your hand. Yeah. Well, suck it. Well, because yeah. if I had... The paper tickets. Yeah. And I wanted to give them to my neighbors, Chris and Mary. Yeah. I could. I would walk across the yard and say, you guys want to see Billy Idol? So. Here. I wouldn't have to go on and transfer. I wouldn't have to send an email. I wouldn't have okay. to call somebody and get a okay. recording. D- you- don't interrupt me. Okay. I wouldn't have to do any of that crap yeah. because I could just take the paper tickets uh-huh. and just hand them to somebody. Yeah. If I needed to sell them, I could take my paper tickets. They could give me paper money. Okay. End of story. Okay. And then there you go. So two things. One, okay. what if your house burns down? Then your Atlantis tickets are gone. 
Okay. okay. Yeah, well, if two, your phone's in the house, two. when uh, your house burns down, it shouldn't be. Then you're well, going to be outside live streaming it. Yeah. <laughs> the second thing is that when I was there and going uh-huh. through this, there mm-hmm. was a little Darren, you know, mm-hmm. like a little, little angel and little on your devil. shoulder going, there's a little devil on the shore going, uh huh, yeah. uh huh. What pa- about the paper tickets? Paper tickets. And I agree with you, but. Mm-hmm. I am perfectly happy being a hypocrite on this. Okay. I'm perfectly happy Fine. agreeing with you and also thinking you're a dumbass. Because at when, the same time. When I got those Bill Addle tickets, uh-huh. I was looking and looking and looking. Where do I click to have them mm-hmm. sent to my house? Because yeah. I'm old school. Well, I love having the tickets come because I have a big old honking box full of concert tickets. Yeah. And one of these days, I'm going to make a big collage or something out of my concert tickets yeah right i have a theory i have a theory okay that might help you that if i keep interrupting darren this something will come true well, yeah, okay. yeah 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 is that when i went there uh-huh. i had the virtual ticket mm-hmm. kind of uh-huh. and they gave me a paper ticket i'm wondering if any concert if you go to the box office if they'll print you off a, a real ticket on from your virtual ticket i like the paper I, ticket because i keep it in my freaking scrapbook okay uh, ethel pap off i th- yeah. i'm pretty sure let's let's try it okay Let's make it on the, the Gojira. Gojira. At Gojira. Let's okay. go try to get a paper ticket. Okay. That's what we'll do. Okay. But when I had to, because you hate Ticketmaster, I'm not a fan of Ticketmaster. Either. I like Ticketmaster. Okay. But whatever. they pissed me off. Here. Whatever. Go go get into bed with Ticketmaster. Okay. Fine. I had to download the app. So yeah. now I have the Ticketmaster app on my phone. Yeah. Which to me feels like the equivalent of having a leech. Yeah. They on know my everything body. about you now. I've got a leech on my body and I can't get this leech off. Right. And Your I, Kroger and Plus I, card is going to quit I, working now that you have the... <laughs> hey, I, but I had to get a new Kroger Plus card, but we'll talk about that later. Okay. Um, I need but one. But yeah, but there's a place mm-hmm. in Cincinnati okay. where you can go and you can buy tickets for Riverbend and you can bypass Ticketmaster. Yeah, but on the Ticketmaster, you get to choose exactly which seat you're in. When you go to the place, you can pick where you go. Can you really? Yes. Really? Honest to God. When have I ever lied to you? Except when I said I thought you were funny two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. that's where I Ooh. go. That's where I buy my tickets. Really? I pick them out myself. They oh. print off the paper tickets. I have them in my hand. Jeez. I put them in a fireproof safe. Yeah. And I keep them in day of show. I carry my tickets with me. I hand them to the guy. They scan yeah. it. And then I put them in my scrapbook. So while you're waiting for the concert, do you whittle? Yeah. Okay. I, I have my chaw. <laughs> Sit in the rocking chair out there exactly. with, with yeah. old with old blue. Yeah, yeah. yeah we sure do need this I rain. Yeah. We'll be seeing go here out here uh, yeah. at the end of fall. Yeah, yeah. They sure do like to scream a lot. Yeah, they sure yeah. do. They sure do. Here, tell they got a song about the beast. They do. <laughs> this portion of Irritable Dad Syndrome is brought to you by Otis Elevators. Hi, I'm your buddy Dave Lay. And for the last two weeks, I've been taking the stairs. Why? Well, I'll tell you. It turns out that the hotel my wife booked for vacation didn't have an Otis elevator. I complained to the manager, but he says there really wasn't anything he could do about it. Regardless, I'll never stay in that dump again. I am brand loyal, and the only elevator I ever step foot in is an Otis. There's nothing like the feel, the smell, and the comfort of an Otis elevator. Being inside an Otis, well, it just feels like home. Now, back to the show. Uh, hey guys, you left the music on again. So you went to see that concert, and then oh, you went to I see went, Primus. Yeah, just a few days later. Did you wear your skull cap? I couldn't find my do rag. Your do rag, uh, or what did we decide? It was a bandana. Your, yeah, I couldn't find it, and I was going to wear my Rush uh, belt buckle, but I'm too fat for you, it. And I you're, wait, you're hurt too me. fat for the belt buckle. Yeah, because it's big. It's a big buckle, uh-huh. and this has got to rest on something. <laughs> and resting on that buckle is not going <laughs> to. He's referencing his uh, his tummy. my sizable <laughs> tummy. So uh, yeah, now I went to see Primus, uh-huh. and I I put up a a. Um, a contest. I think I was going to talk to you about this uh, off the air, but I figured we'll talk about it on air. Okay. 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 I want to do. A, I want to do a periodic uh, contests. I'm going to take a because I have tons of concert pictures. Okay. I want to do what I did uh, today is give me the the artist mm-hmm. and the tour that this is from, and whoever gets, says it first gets a shout out or uh, something. <laughs> They win absolutely nothing. Nothing. So Chris Hughes won the first one. 
he correctly identified Primus. Uh -huh. He didn't say the tour name. Okay. Because um, he doesn't follow directions. Right. <laughs> He's not even supposed to be he's responding a, he's to you. He's a repeat offender. Because he's banned from our so show again. I want to give Chris uh, Hughes a <laughs> shout-out. Uh-huh. Chris Hughes. Uh-huh. There's being, your shout-out. Uh, identifier Loser. of the yeah. show. <laughs> but to complete his answer, it was uh -huh. the Rush tribute A tribute tour. to Kings. Farewell to Kings tribute to Kings. It was, called Farewell to Kings. it was called Farewell to Kings when I bought the ticket, and then they changed the tour name to Tribute to Kings. I thought okay. that was odd. Uh -huh. The album is Farewell to Kings. Mm -hmm. So they played a Primus set. They played about 10 Primus songs. Did they do Winona Had a Big Brown Beaver? I did see Winona's Got a Big Brown Beaver. Winona's Has a Big Brown Beaver. The first time I saw Primus when they opened for Slayer, uh -huh. I did not see Winona's Big Brown Beaver. They opened for Slayer? Yeah. That's the first... <laughs> that's, that's the... That's... <laughs> That's, that's a the, weird show. That's the only time I've ever seen them. That's the I, that's why I like them now is because I saw I was forced to watch them for forty five minutes. I never I, cared about them. Before. Yeah, I saw them on the Horde tour, uh, and it was uh, uh, Neil Young, Blues Traveler, Primus. God, was that the one the Ramones were on? Ramones were horrible, just horrible. Yeah. Um, but Horde Horizons of Rock developing everywhere, and okay. an all day show. Yeah. And I knew a little bit about Primus, yeah. and they came on. I'm like, damn, Primus is pretty fun. Yeah, they're I, I fun, enjoyed man. It. But they didn't do Winona's Big Brown Beaver. Yeah, I I lost my mind when they did Winona's Big Brown Beaver yeah. because I was so excited at Slayer. Me and my buddy Coburn went to see Slayer together, mm -hmm. and Primus is out. We kept talking about, well, we're going to see Big Brown Beaver. Yeah. And they never did it, and I yeah. was bummed. And they're, they're, the lead singer plays bass, and it's Les uh, Nesman. Claypool, yes. Les Claypool. Yeah. Les Nesman was done to be KRP. <laughs> yeah. He threw turkeys out he of the did, thing? He, did, he didn't throw the turkeys. Yeah. <laughs> He, he broadcasted live when the turkeys <laughs> <Okay>. came down. <laughs> oh, the humanity. <laughs> They're dropping like sacks of wet cement. <laughs> so, okay, so the interesting thing about this is that this concert took place like three or four days after the Alanis concert. Uh -huh. Alanis was at the Riverbend mm -hmm. Amphitheater. This was at the PNC Pavilion. They which face each other. They like, face each other. You could, if you have long enough arms, you can touch <laughs> yeah, <laughs> both, both. So I did wear. I wore my Rush shirt. No, you didn't 40. wear the SpongeBob uh, one. No, I didn't okay. do that. I didn't do that. Uh, there were a lot of. You look at T-shirts. The number of T-shirts of bands. There were a ton of Rush fans there. Okay, um, which you would expect. Yeah, there were some Primus fans. There were a lot of Slayer T-shirts. I didn't expect that. Uh, the concert started. Uh, it was a prime. Uh, I saw the Sword. Okay. Yeah. They were awesome. Okay. Um, they didn't move around that much, but the sword. I've that, played. They're I've, an opening act. Yeah. They okay. Were, they opened for Primus. Never heard of them. Yeah. Oh no, you, yeah, you, yeah. you played the song. They're, for they're them. basically the new Black Sabbath. Okay. Um, and then you know Primus started and they did their Primus set. They did a really good job in terms of Primus music that Rush fans would enjoy. Mm -hmm. Really long, trippy, trippy stuff. Except for right. one known as Big Brown Beaver. Right. Um. So. The when I sat down, I was in the front row of where you sit. Okay. <laughs> and so by you're that, telling I mean, me you sat in the row where you sit. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't in the pit. God, there was a so pit. Stupid. The pit was in front of me. Okay. The front row where you sit. Oh, oh, All right, okay, okay, okay. All right. All right. Everything before that's where you not calm sit. Your, calm your chaw. <laughs> So there's some guys next to me, mm -hmm. okay, there's an empty seat, then there's my seat, and there's like a row of like, there's like five or six empty seats. Some Rush fans came, a couple seats down from me. I've got like run of the place. Primus gets through their first tune, their second tune comes on, and this guy who looks like an accountant, and his wife, mm -hmm. I don't want to say Karen, but okay. Okay. Like she doesn't look like she should be at a Primus concert. Say no more. All right. You know what I mean? She's not having a good time. So he sits down right next. Oh, she had a very good time. Okay. He sits down right next to me, and I'm you see, like, typically Karens are complaining, which is why. I well, he looks. She she looks. She had like a very mom look. I think what you're trying to say is looks can be deceiving. Yeah. Okay. Carry on. So this guy was kind of like the accountant type. Okay. No offense to accountants out there that rock. I know at least one. Did he have a calculator on him? Mm-hmm. Okay. He had, like, shorts with his shirt tucked in and the whole thing. <laughs> and he looked over. So it's Primus is a loud band. Yeah. And we're right in front of the speaker. Mm -hmm. Um, And he looks over at me, and he's clapping, and he, he, he yells in my face, and I don't want to, Too many puppies! <laughs> what? And I just did what you just did. 
I laughed and said, what? Even though I know that Too Many Puppies is a Primus song. Oh, okay. And I said, no, it's not Too Many Puppies. And he's like, what? And I, I, I tried to repeat it in the middle of me repeating, Wee! and just starts clapping like crazy. I'm like, okay, it's weird. It was like watching Stephen Colbert lose his mind at the, he, at the <laughs> you know, it was odd. His wife was like moving around like a snake. Uh huh. Okay. She's wiggling around all over the place. Mm-hmm. They were really into the Primus show. Yeah. Um, he, he, they, they're going off. He's screaming woo inappropriately, even mm-hmm. for a Primus concert. Okay. Um, get through a few songs and then they leave. And I'm like, okay, thank God. I, cause I, this has happened to me before in concerts. People just come up to wherever and yes, then they, and then they, they gravitate they either toward get you. pulled back or they go away. And I thought, well, that was a close one. I thought I was going to sit next to a pair of jerks the entire show. Mm-hmm. So we go a few more songs through. They do the, um, uh, there's a couple of songs before the intermission. This couple comes back. The wife can barely walk. Mm-hmm. She's stumbling. Mm-hmm. And and is she more or less uh, impaired than the woman waiting in line for T-shirts at Billy Idol? Who she was Daffy close, ducked into the ditch. She she gets there. Okay, she gets there. She was close to that. She she almost fell over the rail okay. into the pit. Okay. Now again, if somebody's like that and they've got a Rob Zombie T-shirt or a Primus T-shirt mm-hmm. or a Tool T-shirt. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Yeah, a mom that looks like she literally just dropped her kids off at the preschool. Yeah, looking like that. It's a it's it's a bit off. But if it's a mom who literally just dropped her kids off at preschool, she needs to have that. That's happen true. To her. That's she true. She needs to let go. So and just, now just get ripped. Now she's just all over the place. Uh-huh. He's got her in front of him. Uh, I'll let your imagination run wild. <laughs> They're getting very friendly with one another. Okay. And I'm trying to enjoy the show uh-huh. on, on stage. They're about Primus. to have a, a Primus bait. Yeah. And so they do their thing. And then there's the intermission where they have, I sent a picture out. They'll be right back with the crown. I think I put that in irritabledadsyndrome.com. Yeah. Okay. They leave. Everybody leaves for the intermission. Primus comes back out and starts with the first song from Farewell to Kings and the rush portion. By the way, Anybody thinking about going to see this show, absolutely go see this show. Because yeah. Rush has stopped. You're not going to see Rush play anymore. They're, they're no more, yeah. And uh, outside of The Voice, and they had to slow down a couple of times for the drummer, I think. I mean, mm-hmm. they're not as precise as Rush is, but well, who is? they did a damn, damn good yeah. job. And and uh, Les Claypool was very open about the fact that he can't sing as high as Getty Lee. Well, Getty Lee he, can't sing as he, high as Getty Lee now. He, yeah. <laughs> he said a couple of times, he's like, I'm, I'm willing to squeeze my... <laughs> to get get that high, if you guys want me to, I mean, he he was he was funny through the whole thing. My favorite song, one of my favorite songs off of that album is Xanadu. It's the second song. Okay. It's a nine minute song. It's one of these. It's like uh, it's amazing. Now it's not the Olivia Newton John Electric Light Orchestra song from the movie Xanadu. <laughs> <laughs> So she, now they changed positions. So now she's right next to me. Now she's on top. (laughs) (laughs) She's right next to me. She has no concept of space. Uh Now I'm on the left side. I can still, my view of the screen, I could just barely, I can see like most, almost all the screen Mm -hmm. where I had to move to get away from her flailing fists. Now I can only see most of it. And Uh that kind of annoys me because I paid for a seat over here and she's having her Janis Joplin moment (laughs) and he's screaming and clapping and yelling too many puppies. And it's really just, it's really just getting annoying. So she hits me probably about three or four times. And every time she does, sorry, sorry. And she pitched forward over the rail. She didn't fall completely over because he was right there to grab her waist and pull her back up. And she just comes back going, <laughs> sorry, sorry. This, oh this is going on yeah. like, the whole time. Yeah. Um, I'm very close to saying something. So you know how like you, you try to be polite. So I think I'll say something to somebody if they're, you know, like another dude, I'll say something to them. It, yeah. They hit me like two or three times. We'll be like, bud, dude, calm down. Back up. So think about how far you have to go to say something to someone's wife when they're right there. Yeah. That's where I was. I was about to say, you need to get some help. You need a 12-step, <laughs> you need program. A 12-step program. You need something. <laughs> you need to You need to either dress to match how you are uh-huh. or be how you are dressed to be. <laughs> But you can't do both. Right. You can't dress. You can't come in here like a, a kindergarten you teacher. Yeah, you can't dress like the church lady and be yeah. Slayer Woman. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, it just, I hear you. Yeah, anyway, 
it kept going and going and going. Finally, they get to the last song. Now, I had already decided I was going to leave at the end of the last song of the Farewell to Kings album, because they typically only play one or two Primus songs after that. And again, that venue, it's more important for me to get home than watch that. It's impossible to get out of River. Right. So the last song is Cygnus X1. So Rush fans will know that's like a big deal. Yeah. They had an amazing animation going on. I mean, they knocked this thing out of the park. She hit flat out hits me like in the neck. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to watch the rest of the song from out the exit because I'm going to be going out there anyway. Yeah. I go out to the exit. I got a full on view. Now there's people three feet behind me that are doing the same thing that I'm doing. There's a lot of Rush fans out there doing exactly what I was doing. And I'm watching it, and one of the venue people comes over and says, uh, you can't stand in the aisle. And I'm like, uh, and I gesture back to the people behind me. I was like, are, am I okay to stand where they are? Yeah, that's fine. I literally just, while staring at her in the eye, took one step back. <laughs> and I said, is this okay? Yeah. She said, yeah, We're I good? think that's fine. Not and she walked away. And okay. then I heard one of the guys behind me, what the? Yeah. So I think he saw what happened. Yeah. Anyway, the song ends, and I'm like, I'm smart. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to be the only one in the parking lot. Wrong. Wrong. Every Rush fan in that place, which was 70% of the group. I mean, it was like it was like the concert ended. Mm-hmm. And you could hear them starting the next song, but there was just a sea of people going out to the parking lot. As I was leaving, there was a group of people I was walking by. I just said, because I'm a friendly guy. Yeah, I was you're like, so lovable. I said, is, is, uh, is that what all the Rush fans left at the end of Cygnus? And one of the guys was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course we did. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so why was Primus doing an entire Rush album? They are huge Rush fans. Okay. And they have done, the reason I thought this would be a good concert, and it was, is when they opened for Slayer, mm. they played Cygnus X1 as their as their last song. And because, I and I was like, I was half listening to them, half not, and I thought, this is a Rush, this is a Rush song. Right. And it sounds just like them. I knew they would do a good job. Are Primus a trio? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. they they did it upright. I mean, the drummer, God help him. He the first song. I don't know what it is about the first song. It makes me want to listen to the Rush version again. But he he had a little bit of trouble on that. The guitar player did great. Uh-huh. Wasn't as precise as Alex is. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a thing about Rush is when you listen to him, you kind of forget how literally pre- yes. every sound you hear is supposed to be there the way it's there. It's insane because watching Rush perform, it's like all three mm. of them are doing a nonstop. Solo, oh yeah, that just meld together and yeah. meld meld is a word. Yeah, um, it's it's insane, really. Yeah, and I so I've become a huge Rush fan. They're my second favorite band over the years, and I've read a few things. And, and something I read the other day just kind of cracked me up. On their Hemispheres album, they were talking about Getty was having trouble explaining to Alex how a guitar thing was supposed to go, and Neil would have want to be telling them how a bass play. So they just learned each other's instruments, yeah. so they could just play here. Play it like that. Yeah. Okay, Neil, when you do the drums, do that. I was like, good Lord. Yeah, crazy. And you probably don't even notice it in the song. They could have done whatever. And then you hear something like uh, Oingo Boingo. (laughs) It's a dead man's party. (laughs) Hey, who could ask for more? By the way, the, the music concert you were thinking of was Lilith Fair. This portion of Irritable Dead Syndrome is brought to you by Barney Miller. Hal Linden and Abe Vigoda star in this Emmy award-winning comedy series that's fun for everybody. Tune in each week and enjoy the wacky antics of police officers who somehow manage to keep the street safe in Greenwich Village's 12th Precinct. You won't want to miss a single episode. Barney Miller, now streaming on Crackle. You were talking about the weird couple at the Primus concert. Mm -hmm. I ran into a weird couple at Target. Nowhere near... (laughs) Anywhere what you with- saw, prob- although that would be awesome, though. <laughs> hey, we're knocking <laughs> off the shelves. I'm going to uh, randomly go up to people and ask too many puppies in a many, screamy voice. Too many puppies? <laughs> yeah. We're in Target looking around, mm-hmm. and I overhear this man and uh, girlfriend, wife, I don't know, yeah. sister, I have no idea. But they're having this conversation, and he's asking her if she thinks that he would be able to lift a sheep. <laughs> And and Libby comes up and says, she comes up and says, hey, have you seen Jazz? Like, stop, stop. She's like, did you little, did you just shush me? I'm like, yeah. This guy's asking his girlfriend if she thinks that he could lift a sheep. She's like, and then she goes, 
<laughs> Put, puts her ear in and starts listening. And then they start asking if a lamb and a sheep are the same thing. And then oh. they laughed and then they walked away. Okay. And I'm thinking, don't did, walk did, away. They didn't know each other or they did know each other? No, th- no they, they, they knew were each other. They, and then they just left. Oh, my God. Okay. But I'm like, I could listen to this all day. <laughs> Is a lamb the same as a sheep? Well, a lamb is a baby sheep. Is it really? Yeah. You don't know that. <laughs> I thought a baby sheep was a shep. <laughs> no. It's not a shep. Like a baby cow is a cow puppy, right? That's a calf. <laughs> That's a calf. Yeah. A baby sheep is a lamb. Okay, you ready for the Kroger Story of the Week? Hit it, Dave. It's time now for the Kroger Story of the Week. I'm at Kroger. Okay. And I'm in the produce department. And like I've told you before, first yeah. thing I get in Kroger... The bananas. I get my bananas. I grab a couple of things. I move over, and I'm going to get some avocado. They got the good fat on them, whatever the hell that means. So I'm waiting to get avocados, and this woman is there, and she's got her hand in the plastic bag, and she is feeling every avocado. (laughs) She's... Touching. So are you allowed to do that? I, apparently so. Okay. Right. I thought, you know, we're going to have to file a restraining order. It's like the guy I talked about before that was walking through and just grabbing some random grapes out of the bags. Right. Well, no, yeah. she wasn't like like licking them. Okay. But she's feeling every avocado. Okay. And I'm just waiting and waiting yeah. and waiting. And then I thought, holy crap, if she's passing all of these avocados, that means that they're all either too hard or too soft. She looks at me and she goes, they're all either too hard or too soft. <laughs> <laughs> And she finally grabs one, and uh-huh. I'm like, well, you've got the only good one. But I was thinking, if that was my criteria for finding a woman, she would have been it. <laughs> it's like, unfortunately, that's not the case. The rest of the trip was pretty much uneventful. Nothing in the crowbar. There's nothing by the cheese section. No one in the cereal aisle. Okay. My cashier, who I always go in for a history lesson, he's working at all of the self-checkout okay. lanes. Okay. So I'm like, why are you putting him over there? Put him over here where he can talk to yeah. more, more people. Yeah. So I was pissed off about that. I'm going out to the car. I'm loading up my stuff. And this woman is walking down. And she looks at me and she smiles ear to ear. And she goes, oh, <laughs> thank you. I said, uh, you're welcome. She, she points at my cart. You reminded me I forgot to get toilet paper. What the hell? <laughs> it's like, you're welcome. What the hell? <laughs> it wasn't even toilet paper, it was paper towels. <laughs> and that's the Kroger Story of the Week. <laughs> this has been the Kroger Story of the Week. Speaking of toilet paper, on Friday night, mm-hmm. I went to Beechwood High School, which okay. is in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. Okay. The TV station where I work, on Friday nights, we have The Blitz. Our sports team goes live from a high school football field okay. covering a big game for the week. Okay. Okay. Yep. I go out there with the Blitz Blaster. Okay. This is a it's t-shirt. Like a t-shirt gun. It's a t-shirt cannon. Okay. Yeah. And I've got 50 some t-shirts. Mm-hmm. And after they record their uh, all their hits during the newscast, mm-hmm. we go out and shoot t-shirts into the crowd. Mm-hmm. The crowd goes crazy for these free t-shirts. So I'm at Beachwood. Have you ever accidentally shot one like completely over the stands to where they? We came close. Okay, we came really close. Yeah, to, yeah, they shot it way too high. <laughs> so at Beachwood, and I have to post these pictures on our website. They toilet papered the hell out of Beachwood High School. Mm. I don't know if it was Beachwood students. I don't know if it was uh, Covcath, the other team who was playing them that night. But oh my god, it was the most insane amount of toilet paper. One of the best toilet paper jobs I've ever seen. So I posted on my Facebook page. I said, I've seen a lot of toilet papering in my day, and this one takes the cake. And some friends from high school chimed in and said, I think you did more than see toilet paper jobs. You know, because oh, we, okay. we used to toilet paper houses. So people are right? calling you yeah. out. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, a buddy of mine who he and I, you. he and I together. Oh, yeah. Had toilet papered houses. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, the blood's on your hand, too. Yeah. Don't, don't be acting all pure and innocent. Right? Yeah. So then, and this is where you come in to this story. Oh. Leslie, who I went to high school with. Okay. We used to toilet paper her house all the time. Okay. <laughs> we toilet papered her house several times. Okay. <laughs> she jumps in. And saying, oh, yeah, remember the time that you guys did this and did this and did this and uh-huh. ha, 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 and smiley yeah. face and LOL yeah. and emoji, emoji. Yeah, yeah. And she wraps it up with, by the way, I am the biggest closeted fan of your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> she says. Closeted fan. Closeted fan. Okay. She has never come out 
uh, and admitted that she listens to the podcast. And she said she's listened to every episode and she wishes that we did more episodes a week. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Very flattering. Yeah. (laughs) We don't have the strength. (laughs) We we don't. (laughs) So, Leslie, I wanted to say thank you (laughs) for listening to the podcast. Yeah. For forgiving me for toilet papering your house all the times that we did. And uh, and for your friendship. Yeah. At at my... uh, I ran into her a few years after high school. Okay. And she had told me, she says, you know, I'm a nurse now. You better hope you never get sick. Was she out there toilet paper in your house when you ran into her? I was scared of her. Yeah. I was literally scared of her for a long time. I thought, she is going to kill me. She did not think this was (laughs) funny at all. One time, we toilet papered her house, and one of my friends had stolen something out of her car Uh as a gag. Yeah. I don't know if he planned on giving it back. I'm going to assume that he planned on giving it back. Well, well that's it, it where it ceases to be a gag. That if was, he doesn't give it back. It that, becomes, yeah. and that's where the line was crossed. Yeah, yeah. And I will admit that's yeah. where the line was crossed. I'm gonna. I didn't do it. Although I didn't say, "Hey, you yeah. ought to put that back either." Hey, I'm gonna come in your house and kidnap your kid <laughs> as a gag, <laughs> sell him into slavery, just as a goof. <laughs> so. They caught wind of it at school, uh-huh. and the uh, office secretary, who was like another mom to me, I was best mm-hmm. friends with her son. Yeah, we all get called into the office. Oh, uh, yeah. We were like in really, really big trouble. Mm-hmm. And if we apologize, if we promise never to do it again, they won't call uh, any authorities or whatever. And so we stopped. We and I admit, did you apologize? We, oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. We we and we did. We crossed a line when we yeah. did that. But I thought she was going to kill me. <laughs> so then you flash forward a few more years mm-hmm. at our twentieth high school reunion. Okay, I see my friend Courtney, and okay. I, and I'm, I'm like, oh my god, hey Courtney, how you doing? I'm so excited to see you. And she goes, hey, guess who's here? Leslie's here. I'm like, no, oh, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I'm not going to have her slit my throat on our twentieth <laughs> high school reunion. So Leslie comes up, uh-huh. smiling ear to ear, laughing, gives me this big hug, introduces me to her husband, and uh-huh. she's and they're like, he's the guy that used the toilet paper house, and she's yes, and and it was just all all water under the bridge. Okay, that's and good. So, yeah, it was very cool. That's good. <laughs> and, yeah. we're, and we're like, we're really good friends now. I'm extremely happy that she's become a fan of our show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Go tell somebody about yeah, exactly. it. Exactly, Leslie. Yeah. Spread the word. Yep. We interrupt this program for a special announcement. Congratulations to Leslie Collie Hole, Irritable Dad Syndrome's Listener of the Week. This has been a special announcement. My rabbit is pooping all over everything. Are these little rabbit turds? These are rabbit pellets. They're like a little bit bigger than BBs. Oh, that's unfortunate. We'll clean the cage. Yeah. We'll go into another room. We'll come back, and there's 14 more rabbit turds. (laughs) We'll... You know, move those. And what you're supposed to do is put them in the litter box. And then the rabbit's going to go, oh, my poop's in the litter box. That's where I'm supposed to poop. I'm supposed right. to go poop over there. This is a dumb rabbit. I mean. He's adorable. Yeah. But he's the stupidest rabbit we've ever, ever seen. I mean, there's not much room in there for brains, you know. It's, well, yeah. Yeah, factor that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we keep we keep trying to litter boxes. We've had him for a little over a week. I mean, I know you don't expect miracles. Yeah. Uh, and eventually he'll be potty trained. Yeah. But that rabbit's pooping everywhere. Absolutely yeah. everywhere. And okay. uh, it's given me uh, uh, inspiration to welcome our new sponsor for the show. This portion of our show is brought to you by Figgy's Fertilizer. That's right, rabbit poop. We here at Irritable Dead Syndrome are up to our belt loops and rabbit pellets. At first we thought, what are we going to do with all this shit? And now we've found out we're sitting on a gold mine. Rabbit poop has four times the nutrients of cow or horse manure, and it's twice as rich as chicken manure. And the smell, mmm. It's packed with nitrogen, phosphates, potassium, minerals, and micronutrients. And if you buy figgies, you'll know exactly where your fertilizer is coming from. Straight from the butt of Darren's rabbit. So what are you waiting for? Give your garden the extra help it needs to grow strong with Figgy's Fertilizer. Now, back to the show. I got a story of um, Andrew gargling saltwater. I've been waiting to hear a good gargling story for weeks. Okay, so he has braces. 
And one of the things and that, that makes they, it very hard to gargle. One of the things they told him to do was gargle with warm salt water. Uh-huh. You know, if it cuts like your your mouth, yes, and all that stuff. Because it will it will shred. Did you mm-hmm. have braces? I did. Okay, yeah, it will shred I the had, inside of your mouth. Yeah, I had like pre Gen X rate braces. I had braces. I think I could probably get some money mm-hmm. for pain and suffering that I went through. For oh yeah, I, I had like the thing that came around and, and like uh-huh. hooks that went in. It was brutal. They would tighten them, and then you couldn't even bite through sliced cheese. It hurt so bad. Yeah. And then on the back, would they put the silver things with mm-hmm. the, the, the flipper? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, oh, it's torture. So I'm sitting in the kitchen, being my normal self. Uh-huh. Okay. Just minding your own business. Minding my own business. He comes in. He mumbles something about you know his braces hurting, and, and he's going to try to do some salt water. Mm-hmm. And he comes over, and Bess says, well, yeah, get some salt and put it in the water. So he goes and gets a cup of water. Mm -hmm. Then he gets a teaspoon and he pours, uh, he doesn't know which kind of salt to get. And Bess tells him, get the popcorn salt because it's small and it dissolves quickly. Okay. Okay. So he gets that. He measures it out exactly. He comes over and me and Bess are having a conversation about something. So he he keeps interrupting and saying, is this this much salt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that much salt. Mm -hmm. Put it in the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put it in the thing. In the water. (laughs) And then I look at him and like. Put it in the water. That's it's how, salt water. It's salt water. Right, <laughs> you got to put that in the water. Right now, you got water and you got salt. So put the salt in the water. Hey, and you he got puts your it, salt in my water. You so got your he, water in my salt. He dumps it in. You're talking about peanut butter. He dumps it in, and me and Bess go back to talking. Uh-huh. And he goes over to get a spoon, another spoon out of the thing. And Bess stops listening to me. And she's like, <laughs> "What are you? What are you doing?" He's like, "I've got to stir it." And we both, me and Bess, both look at him and in unison say, "Stir it with the spoon you put it." in with don't get a new spoon just put it in and stir it uh uh-huh. same spoon yeah with the same spit now he's getting annoyed with us i can't imagine what okay i can't imagine and i can't remember what it was that i was going to tell him to do i was going to be i was trying to be funny i was going to say something funny because i felt like we had been nagging him a bit i think he, he generally didn't know how to make salt water and we were just kind of being jerky about it right so He's behind me. Uh, I'm sitting at the table up there. And I say, oh, and don't forget to. And then from my ear, oh, yeah, don't forget to. <laughs> and me and Bess lost it, uh-huh. laughing ourselves silly. Uh-huh. She could not breathe. She was laughing so hard. Uh-huh. I look back, and he has this huge grin on his face. And I lose it laughing uh-huh. because he just tore me a new one without actually saying any words, uh-huh. made fun of me, uh-huh. and then went... On and, and gargled his salt water, spit it out in the sink, poured everything, and then went grinning on up into his room. I mentioned last week that my friend Tim Cable passed away, and they had his funeral. And uh, what they did was they made it virtual so that people who were unable to come from out of town could watch Uh on on the internet. And also they didn't want to be irresponsible and have a bunch of people come and be indoors when COVID is still a thing. Okay. So I'm watching his funeral online and it's very sentimental. It's very touching. I mean, it's a funeral, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's hard to watch because you know, it's like, you wish you were there. Uh And uh, his wife was amazing. She Uh said just incredible things. His kids all came up and spoke. They were all amazing. They did a great job, each and every one of them. And my friend Lisa texts me, and she's okay. also watching. Now, Lisa used to uh, work with Tim and I at WJHL. Okay. So she texts me, and she and I are texting back and forth during the funeral. <laughs> which <laughs> in, in, in our defense, it was we funny. were texting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in our defense, we were texting when the the minister was talking. We didn't. We weren't rude, and when the kids were up there, yeah, we... <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the modern version of whispering across the aisle, exactly. You know? And and I told Lisa, I said, now you know, if this was someone else's funeral mm-hmm. and Tim was there in the crowd, yeah. he'd be doing the same. Oh, he'd be thing. doing the same thing. And yeah. it reminded me because Tim and I were at Lisa's wedding. Okay, Lisa had a Jewish wedding. Okay. Okay. So Lisa's up there with her husband, and they they stepped on the the bottle, and they said uh, Mazel Tov. And uh-huh. uh, anyway, so during the ceremony, the um, it's a, it's a rabbi, right? Yeah. I keep wanting to call it a Jewish, call him a Jewish priest. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, and I love Jewish priests. I mean, they, Turbo Lover was their biggest hit. Um, 
So they're standing up there. The the rabbi starts speaking in Hebrew. Okay. And we're just sitting there waiting, you know. Uh-huh. And Tim leans over and goes, I don't know about you, but I can't understand a thing he's saying. <laughs> there's something wrong with this microphone <laughs> i'm like tim shut up you know because i'm laughing and then libby looks at me like what are you laughing for stop it I'm like, tim's doing it he's making me laugh mm. oh it's always tim's fault right <laughs> so here i am you know we're talking with lisa and i told yeah. her this story she didn't know he was cutting up at her wedding which is just <laughs> like him so yeah it was my first virtual funeral and yeah. i mean hopefully it's my last virtual funeral because yeah. yeah i've been to too many funerals this portion of Irritable Dad Syndrome is brought to you by Whoppers All Beef Footlong Hot Dogs. Had a crazy day? Are the kids driving you nuts? And the boss is climbing on your ass waiting for you to work late again? I'm Dave Lay, and I know the feeling. It seems like life is constantly trying to rip me a new one. And this always happens on my night to make dinner. So what do I do? I'll tell you, Sally. I throw some Whoppers All Beef Footlong Hot Dogs on the grill. And just like that, everybody's happy. Whoppers are made from pure beef with no fillers or preservatives. They're packed full of flavor, and they're perfect for any meal or a late-night snack. Get a ruler and measure it yourself. If your hot dog isn't a foot long, they'll refund your money, guaranteed. So after this podcast is over, run out and grab a package of Whoppers All Beef Foot Long Hot Dogs. You'll be glad you did. Telemook makes ice cream sandwiches. Okay. Our lawyer informed us of this. And that's part of his job. So yeah. So I'm glad that he Thank did Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. So we are, we go to Charlie's football game. Okay. Okay. We get done with Charlie's football game. Now we've been out in the sun. This is on Sunday. Okay. We've been out in the sun this entire time. We're all sweaty and nasty. Uh-huh. We want to go home. And I want to stop. We're very close to a Kroger. They always have Blue Bunny ice cream sandwiches. And I think we've established before, those are my favorite ice cream sandwiches currently. Yeah. So I want to go in there. And I need to get some other things like food that we need to eat. (laughs) But I'm just going to be in there for like maybe five minutes. Wait, is this another Kroger story of the week? This is a Kroger. It's another Kroger story. (laughs) But most of it doesn't take place in Kroger's. Kroger's is just incidental to the story. Okay. Then we go in. I won't use Dave. Now, I've talked to you about this before. My trip, when I know I'm getting ice cream, I get it the very last very thing last. that I get. I've been in the store with you, and you are adamant. You are yeah. military And then it's the first thing that makes it into the house. You it are goes to the freezer. About that. I leave my kids wandering in the street <laughs> while I bring the ice cream in and put it in the freezer. Okay? Uh, That's how I roll. Yeah. Honest so, to God, people. Mike and I were at the grocery store one time. Yes. We went to the crowbar together. Uh-huh. And then I had to grab a couple of things. Mike's like, well, I've got to grab a couple of things, too. Mike was standing there about to put his hand in the cooler to get the ice cream sandwich. And I said, oh, hold on. I need to get a gallon of milk. Oh, for <laughs> sake. <laughs> How long am I got to stand here? I, take, pop, pop, <laughs> snag, I was like, I take, calm down, I take woman. ice cream very seriously. Yeah. So I get it. The last thing, I go up to the thing. Now I'm waiting in mm-hmm. line because the person next to me is having trouble dealing with the little conveyor of, of stuff. Mm-hmm. And now your ice they're cream waiting, is melting. They're waiting until the person in front of them has their stuff completely dealt with before they begin placing their items on the conveyor. Okay. That's selfish. I hate that. Anyway, I get my stuff. Now mm-hmm. I'm, I'm annoyed because mm-hmm. my original speedy exit has been delayed somewhat. Your ice cream is lady. turning into soup. So I run... Out to the car, I put them in sandwich. there, and I say, you know, uh, before I get the, what took you so long? I said, I, I had to get some things that were necessary, and there's ice cream back there, ice cream sandwiches. So we had to go. We get in the car, we get right on 129, and come to a stop. There is a wreck. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Okay. Great. So now I am, and I'll admit it, I'm thinking about my ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> How long do I have before they're no longer... Ice cream sandwiches, and they're just vanilla soup with with cookie stuff floating in them. Mm-hmm. So I look on the. I always have Google Maps going. <clears throat> Fifteen minutes, even if you're going home, because it tells you what time you're going to get there. It tells you it tell it looks at traffic and everything. It you, you don't do that. <laughs> you should know how long you're. It's going to no. take to get home. No, it takes what? normally three minutes from that point. But I knew it was going to take twenty minutes. Uh huh. Because that's what Google Maps said. You don't use it for traffic. 
Speed traps, all that stuff? No, not when I'm going somewhere that I know where I'm going. Okay, Boomer. Anyway, it helped me get, like, I had to go home a whole different route, but that's at the end of the story. Okay. Okay, so we're waiting. Okay. We're we're in the traffic, and I said that's going to be about 15, 20 minutes. In the car. <coughs> and then Bess says, well, let's you open. You sound like an 84 yeah. Ford S this. that needs an oil change. That's the kids in the back. So uh-huh. And then Bess says, well, let's open up the ice cream sandwiches. And I go, ho, 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 ho. He's no, 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 no. Oh, she thinks that they're for everybody. She's a, she thinks they're for everybody. <laughs> B, she's about to open them and expose them to more heat. And I say, I don't know that we need to open up the ice cream sandwiches just yet. <laughs> and she says, well, I'm hungry. I want, and, and we're, we're all dehydrated. Uh huh. And I said, actually, sugar is going to make you more yeah, dehydrated. Yes. You shouldn't be putting ice dairy, cream sandwich. And dairy At will which make point I sick. get the stare and see, she says, the kids need something to eat. Uh huh. I said, there's buns. <laughs> there's buns in there. <laughs> hamburger because buns. Because I'm going to, yeah, because I'm going to, because I was going to make hamburgers <laughs> and hot dogs. Have them eat the buns. Don't eat my ice cream sandwiches. And then <laughs> Charlie from the back says, really? And Andrew is like, I'm getting the ice cream sandwiches. So he starts reaching into the uh, thing, and Bess is like, thank you. So they open up the box of ice cream sandwiches. And I said, you know, I'm, I've become uh, passive aggressive. And I'm like, uh-huh. okay, I guess we're just going to let the ice cream sandwiches melt. That's fine. I spent a lot of money. Those are my ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> if any one of you takes a bite and starts talking about how much these suck, you're walking home. Uh-huh. I'm not putting up with that. Yeah. Don't, because they've done that before with the Blue Bunny. Oh, these are terrible. <laughs> Oh, these are awful. Right. And, and just eat them right in front of me. Uh-huh. And and Bess is like, you need to calm down. <laughs> Which okay. always works. So now... That always works when you tell the wife that. So now I'm steaming. Uh-huh. But I've, I've, like, I've gotten to the edge of an argument. Uh-huh. I've, at this point, it's been mostly good-natured, but I'm skirting the edge of an argument here. So I, I stand down. Okay? Now I'm waiting, and I'm looking up the road. And Andrew keeps saying, just pull in the grass. Just He wants me to go through the median and turn around on 129. And I'm saying, just hold on, bud. I don't want to do that just yet. And I'm looking up to see what's going on. It looks like it's a bad wreck. Right. Okay. We're there for another three or four minutes. <laughs> I'm thinking the ice cream's melting. It's melting. But and, officer, my ice cream sandwiches yeah. are melting. <laughs> and I'm thinking now they've opened the package. Uh-huh. So there's more space that is available for the air, the warm air, to hit the sandwiches. They're going to be melting faster. Right. And I'm thinking of what I remember from heat transfer in school. I, by the way, I studied this. <laughs> I know you're Convective an heating and cooling. Yes. I'm like, this is, I don't, it's not exactly like twice or three times faster, but they are more melting at a, at a higher rate. This is all going through my head, but I'm not saying any of it because I don't want to get into a fight. I'm just looking at the road. I'm waiting to see what's going to happen. I see a tow truck come oh dear lord and go sideways i'm like they haven't even started moving this yet so off into the grass i go andrew starts screaming from back oh my god oh my god what's he doing what's he doing what's he i was like shut i don't need you screaming at me while i'm about to pull into traffic the wrong way for a few seconds before we get going the other way i use google maps to get home we're driving it's maybe a five minute journey at that point so I have a moment. I'm getting home. We've been in the car now in the hot sun mm-hmm. for about 10 to 12 minutes. Okay. <laughs> and I can't help myself. We're maybe two minutes from the house. And I say to Bess, you know, you didn't really have to rip those ice cream sandwiches open. Right. And she said, well, you said we were going to be in the car for 10 to 15 minutes. Had I known that you were going to turn around and do this, then I I wouldn't have opened them. And I said, well... We're going to end up having been in the car for 15 minutes because uh-huh. it took five minutes. We waited 10. That's 15 minutes. We're in the car the same amount of time that you thought we were going to be in the car. So that argument doesn't really hold up. And uh-huh. and now I've already, I can't stop myself. And your honor, when the, the only thing I was saying is that when you open the ice cream sandwiches, you expose more of the, you get more surface area yes. available to the heat. Yes. And then it begins to... To melt them more. And she says to Can me, I add one thing? Uh-huh. If when you take one ice cream sandwich uh-huh. out, the friction, when it rubs against <laughs> another one, that right there. You, you can start You haven't fire. even calculated friction. No, yet. no, no, no. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, and so then the, there's yeah. a moment of silence and she says, so you'd rather me and the kids just, they're shaky. They just played a football game. They're, they're shaky. And I, <laughs> I let that one sit. For 20 or 30 seconds. 
And then I said, <laughs> I'd rather you guys be shaky uh-huh. than me have melted ice cream sandwiches. Uh-huh. That was the wrong thing to say. Yeah, Mike. And anybody in that in that situation, you should probably not say that because that got the dark look. <laughs> However, we got home a couple minutes later. Uh-huh. I rushed. I don't even remember turning the car off. I think I might have coasted into the driveway, mm-hmm. still in drive, jumped out, rolled. <laughs> you're, and you're treating. And you, threw them this into is the like, freezer. Okay, okay. The ice cream sandwiches are a human heart. And you are the helicopter pilot who's taking it <laughs> to get it to there's, make sure. That <laughs> well, Darren, there's a time limit. At which point they become useless. I know. Let's remember that the Kroger near us, the one that is the focus of most of Kroger stories, right. they're not the best at stocking Blue Bunny ice cream bars. Mm. The one that I came from mm-hmm. is. Okay. Which means if I want them again, right. I have to go back to that Kroger. To the marketplace. That's a whole five minutes away. Yeah. Ain't nobody got time for that. No. So, yeah. <laughs> the opened opened ice cream sandwiches, I run in, full run. I ran over Booba. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I can't. I I want to believe I didn't kick her out of the way. I think uh-huh. I just ran past her. I threw those into the freezer. I grabbed the other box and put them in the downstairs freezer because mm-hmm. I hide them. They know they already opened one of them, so uh-huh. now I've got a I've got a stash. Perhaps you should start keeping a cooler and dry ice in your car for such an occasion, for Ooh. when you buy ice cream. Then you Ooh. just put it in there. Then someone can be dead on the interstate, yeah. and you'll be just fine because at least your ice cream's okay. Here's the thing. Yeah? If you're concerned about the kids eating, uh huh, I still don't see why they can't just eat the hamburger buns. If it, Yeah, if it's just a matter of, yeah, because carbs. It's pure survival. Carbs. Pure survival. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, normally I would judge the absolute <laughs> out of you on this story. <laughs> But this happens to be the same week. Uh-huh. I've talked about my problem with Swiss rolls. Okay. Little Debbie snack cakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a problem. Okay. Yeah. I have a real bad problem with the Swiss rolls. Yep. Those are my favorite. Okay. My absolute favorite. Like if I had they my look like tr- little cinnamon rolls or they're, they, no, no, they no, like no, the no, long, no. They're, they're the long round, raw, long chocolate, chocolate ones with the cream. With the the, cr- oh, oh God, this, yeah. Okay. Sweet, delicious, tender goodness <laughs> off the middle of it. And you take one bite and then the second yeah. and then you the third, which is the second because they come two in a pack. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you can't just open one. You got to eat both of them. Yeah. Okay. Unless you're out of your mind. <laughs> okay. So I told you uh, not last week, but the week before, I was sick. Okay. Okay. I had yeah. sinusitis. Yeah, your wife bought yeah. you these. Things. She bought these for me. Uh-huh. She bought these for me. Okay. For me. Uh. For me. She bought them for Darren, her yeah. husband. Yeah. Who I've we've been together for twenty some years. Okay. Okay. She bought them for me. Mm-hmm. She bought the boys pop tarts, which I had some. Okay. The, okay, the pop tarts are an eight. Your, she, yeah, listen, the pop tarts are an eight pack. I had two, and I let the boys each have six. Okay? Okay, okay, all right. So there you go. Okay, and then she bought them donuts, and I had one out of the the twelve, okay. and I let them have the rest of them. Okay, okay. Just because I had one of the donuts so, and two of the pop tarts does not yeah. mean that anybody has a right to any of the Swiss rolls. I'm not saying I disagree with you at this mm-hmm. point. I'm just saying your case is just starting to take on water. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Listen. What to get our attorney? I have this. a problem. All right. Okay. okay. And everybody knows this. This is not. Yeah. This, this is like, wait a minute, Dad. I didn't know you were ticklish. Everybody knows I'm ticklish. <laughs> okay. Everybody knows I love the movie Sling Blade. Okay. There's the things about me that people know. Uh huh. So Jacob is going to band. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And he packed a lunch. Okay. And I'm holding air quotes up when I say lunch. Okay. <laughs> Did you just grab random he, things from he the packed, kitchen? Two pieces of cold pizza. Uh, I like eating cold pizza. Okay. And he took a pack of my Swiss rolls. And I said, oh. whoa, 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 whoa. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. These are off the table. And I take them out of his out of his uh, his lunchbox. Yeah. And Libby's like, Darren. And Jacob's like, Dad, please. And Libby's like, Darren. And Jacob, Dad, please. Darren, really? Well, they can't Dad, shame please. you. Don't t- tell me they didn't shame oh, you. Oh, they were they shaming it. me. But Absolutely you didn't give shaming. into it, did you? Did you give into it? After about 20 minutes, <sighs> I finally was just like, yeah, fine. 
Mm-hmm. Here, just take, just take it. Okay, just take it. And I cursed yeah. it before he took it. Can I tell you something? But I, di- I absolutely did not want him taking that Swiss roll. Can I tell you something? Yeah. And I'm not proud of this. Right. There was a moment when all three of them were taking bites of the ice cream sandwich. Uh-huh. I briefly thought about slamming on the brakes so their <laughs> face would go in the... S- <laughs> go in it. And they would get ice cream all over their face. Yeah. And I would say, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. a bun, that wouldn't have been a problem. No. 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 A hamburger <sighs> bun would not have spread all over their face. That's right. Now I'm in a mood. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks we got to end this damn thanks thing. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Yeah. <laughs> We don't, don't turn it off. <laughs> We've got to tell people to go to irritable. Yeah, go to irritabledadsyndrome.com. Tell us your favorite ice cream sandwich stories. Yeah, exactly. And, and can you can you people? What's wrong with you? Yeah, you need to follow us on Facebook, uh-huh. uh, on Instagram, yeah, and Twitter. Because I've been putting contests and all kinds of stuff Subscribe up there, and ain't nobody doing them except the Chris Hughes. Chris Hughes is going to have all the prizes. Yeah, he's going to have all the cool stuff. Because none of you are participating in it. Yeah. What's going on? But seriously, we want you to subscribe to the show. We, we're asking you nicely, leave a review. Yeah. And come back next week. Yeah. Next Thank week you. is going to be even better. Yes. We've got a story or two. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lord. Thank you for listening to Irritable Dad Syndrome. Irritable Dad Syndrome is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. I'm here, but I'm here, and I'm here, but I'm here, and I'm here, and I'm here, here. <laughs> and what it all comes down to is that it's gonna be quite alright. If I got one hand on my puppy and another one on my kitty cat. She doesn't say one hand on my puppy and the other one on my kitty cat. I got a hand in my pocket. Hand in my pocket and the other and one the on my kitty. Giving, the other one's giving a peace sign. Oh. I need to rethink how I've been living my life at this point.